Sports and live Chevy Post Game Report. 2 2 baseball game as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Jeff Francis's night is done. Our Southwest pitching change. Manny Corpus in there, George. One, two, three inning yesterday. Yeah, pitched well yesterday. Utilized that hard, hard sinker. Ran it up to as high as 94 miles an hour to go along with the slippery slider. So you need another one, two, three inning here and allow that offense to get in there and maybe get a run out of this deal. Francis pitched well. Six innings, gave up a couple of runs. They got after him uh, back in the top of the fifth. Other than that, a lot of the goose eggs up on the board. Ground ball to short. First chance for Tulowitzki. Throw out Stephen Drew by a step. One out. Let's go to the studio, get another update. This time on the Los Angeles Dodgers from Tim Ring. Tim. Hey, Drew, NL West action. The Dodgers at Miller Park tonight, leading 3 2 in the sixth when Milwaukee's Kevin Medge takes care of that two run shot to put the crew up 4 3 in the seventh. Tim, you're from Chicago. And Milwaukee 90 minutes to the Northwest. The crew, as you call them, going to have a pretty good club this year, I think. They're going to have a very good ball club, the young ball club. It helps having uh, Hardy back in that lineup again. And then they're, they're potent at offense. And then they also got Supon and Sheets yesterday, a two hit shutout. I mean, they're going to be pretty good. Chris Capuano, one of the better lefties in the National League. 0 and 1 on Connor Jackson. Two for two in a walk tonight. He scored the first run. Of the ball game for Arizona in the fifth when he doubled with two outs that was followed by a Hudson single and then a burn single that brought Hudson in Hudson had moved up to second on the throw to the plate. You know we haven't mentioned that in a while the little things in baseball fundamental baseball Hudson moving up into scoring position on that throw to the plate. Yeah, but you got to have the throw to the plate here at tonight. He, You're talking about tonight on that play. Right. Yeah, he had to get there, but he read it and he yeah, just outran everything else. Yeah, well, I'm talking about a positive fundamental sure. on oh, Arizona's yeah. part. That's I, what I'm I not yeah. taking anything away from what the Rockies did. It wasn't a mistake oh, yeah. there. So it, he moves it, to scoring position and then Burns drives him in. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 Tinsley, Tinsley with a lot of that. I mean, you know, he's he's reading while a guy's running up and he sees that the cut off the play's coming and he's waving and you got to dig. You get he's screaming all the way up through there. And Lee Tinsley's the guy pushing him into second base, and he, you know, obviously safe. And, and the rest, a uh, little bit of history here in that part of here. Strike three. Nasty. I like that. Jackson <laughs> frozen by Manny Corpus. I like that, boy. You pump that slider, and then all of a sudden, you just paint the outside corner. 90 plus miles an hour, that late tailback, and the, the punch out. And Jackson, all you can do is just put it on your shoulder and head back. I mean, that's just a pitcher's pitch. Not enough of the plate. Two strike counts. You got to be hacking. Well, Hudson will come up now and it'll give you a chance too. I want to make sure fans, you need to vote on the Rockies MVP of the 2006 season. Who do you think it's really going to be? Well, if you vote now, they're going to recognize the player of your choice during the April 16th through the 29th homestand. The players the uh, fan choose will be featured on FSN Rocky Mountain, KOA, and the Rocky Mountain News. Go to ColoradoRockies.com and vote by April 12th. Here's the 1 0 to Orlando Hernandez slider for a strike. Another email. This is from Ryan down in Pueblo, Colorado. Do you guys think Randy Johnson will be as effective this time around in Arizona? And Bob Melvin was peppered with questions about the unit before the ball game. He's not going to be as dominant as he was a few years ago with Arizona. But as Bob Melvin said, he may not throw 100 anymore. But 95 with that late slider still pretty good and they're going to get him back third week of April if everything continues to go you know what as planned for Randy Johnson just because he didn't go out and win 500 games a year in New York and have an earned run average of 0 0 0 it was a complete failure the guy won 17 games two years in a row I mean come on he's 40 something years old see you on a hard slide. A good Corpus been his first two outings. Two punch outs, another one, two, three inning. Two, two, stretch time at Coors Field. And LeVon Hernandez continues on for the Arizona Diamondbacks. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, it'll be the bottom third of the Rockies lineup. Troy Tulowitzki, Chris Ionetta, and then a pinch hitter. Tulowitzki in the ball game, a strikeout and a ground ball to shortstop. Last hit for the Rockies, second inning, Kaz Matsui. All four of their hits in the first two innings. Both of their runs in the first two innings. Bob Apodaca visiting with the native of Panama, Manuel Corpus, who George has late inning stuff. 
Yes, he does. That was proven a year ago. This, this ball's, ball's crushed left center field, and it's going to be run down by Hairston again. It's the second time he's run down a ball in the gap tonight. He gets very good jumps. Well, for years, the Diamondbacks, so you looked out to left field. He was The guy out there was there for his bat and RBI production. Now they got a little speed and defense. Luis Gonzalez didn't have this type of speed, but he had a lot of knowledge. And then this time, a play just outran the baseball. Five put outs in this ball game tonight for Harrison. You know, George, you, you look at the outfield alignment, it's been pretty consistent these first two ball games. They're squeezing the gap, especially on the pull side. Here we go with new terms, but on the pull side, you notice Hairston has been in left center field throughout the first two ball games of this series. Yeah, I mean, he's shaded more that way because what they're doing is they're pitching everybody away to the outside part of the plate. So with a little bit of velocity, the right handed hitter, it's going to be difficult for him to get out front and hook something down into the corners. So this way they just take it and go the other way. And I mean, it works to, it works to their direction. Oh, soft pop fly. Jackson ought to be able to make a play on this. And no, he won't. He got wall fever. He started, the footsteps went from the grass to the cinder block. And it was like, uh oh, where's the wall? It's Norman. I mean, a guy like Helton's got that in his hip pocket. One ball, two strikes on Chris Ionetta. Jeff Baker has come out on deck. Remember him from yesterday. Was that slow hook? Did he break 60 on that one, George? I don't think so. They, well, he threw it so soft it wouldn't register. No. <laughs> I, you know, it's guys like him, I mean, I'm not rooting for him to win, Rockies fans, but guys like this, it's kind of fun to watch throw. And the reason I say that is they don't rely on a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. They pitch. This is third strike out of the game, but he has been so effective. Well, I mean, look at this last curveball. Again, it's so slow that, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to register. I mean, that, that thing is down low, and it's all he does is flip it out of his hand and allow the downward rotation and the gravity basically pull the ball down. And Chris Snyder wants to make sure Levon Hernandez understands who's coming up for the Rockies. He may not be real familiar with Jeff Baker. Rockies fans know him well yesterday against Brandon Batters. Touch a ball. There's the ball. Got the glove and took that over the fence of Chris Young. Now if you Pitch hit home run to give the Rockies a 6-5 lead. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold it late. And if you missed the pregame show, I mean, you've got just a base hit back up the middle here again. But the thing about him, I mean, 42 at bat, six home runs. I mean, one over seven. That's pretty good numbers for Baker in his big late career. Let's take a look at his swing now. And I mean, he, as a pinch hitter, you got to be able to unload right out of the chute. And he does just that. I mean, he came to the plate ready. Look at the head, the contact, the leg drive back here out on that front leg. That's a pretty nice job of hitting there, folks, on a breaking ball away from him. Just shot it right back up the middle. George, last year the Rockies were one of the poorest teams in the National League, pinch hitting. This year they are going to be loads better. And one of the reasons the guy at first base, Jeff Baker, veteran John Mabry, veteran Steve Finley, Jamie Carroll. Well, I think where you jump out there, I mean, John Mabry the last couple of years has been pushed into everyday duty. But the majority of his career was late inning big hits as a pinch hitter. He is extremely good at what he did. And I think that, uh, you know, with adding him to your bench along with Finley and, and Baker as a young pinch hitter, pretty good. Chases there, it's 0 and 2. Rockies last year hit 214 in the pinch. Two pitch, I was starting to say. And check swing, it's one and two. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, this guy knows how to make a pitch when he needs to. Tony Pena, the uh, right hander, 
warming up down in the Diamondback bullpen. Change up and Levon Hernandez strikes out Willie Tavares. The Jeff Baker singles. He's left at first base. We'll go to the eighth. Still tied up at two. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Drew Goodman, George Frazier upstairs. Keith Flyer roaming around the ballpark. Game two of the 162 game Major League season. The Rockies and Diamondbacks and. The Rockies again will hand it to Latroy Hawkins looking to bounce back from yesterday's performance. He had three runs in the eighth inning. And the Rockies lost a 6-5 lead. The Diamondbacks went on to win 8-6. Eric Burns had a big hit, a two-run single off of Hawkins yesterday. Hawkins got out in front of him with the cutters or sliders away. Let's see how he works him here. Leading off the eighth. He goes fastball in at 91. It's a ball. Burns is one for three in the ball game. Hairston and Tracy to follow. Yesterday on a 90 plus mile an hour fastball, not the location he wanted it. Up and was able to just take it to the opposite field. We're trying to allow that to happen again. And you know, talking with Bob Apodaca, he said he just everything got in a hurry for Latroy yesterday. I think wanted to come out and obviously put a huge uh, impact on the ball game and the club. Two hops at help. Hawkins gets over. Good feed. One out. So a big guy to retire there. And Eric Burns. That'll bring up Scott Hairston. I asked Jeff Houston this question, George, and I want to ask you it because you were a reliever, obviously, for a long time in the big leagues. After a ball game, you play so many, and everybody is giving their best. Nobody wanted to have, nobody wants to have a bad day. And Latroy Hawkins, you know, took responsibility yesterday in the clubhouse. After, are words ever conveyed between teammates after a ball game? I mean, do you ever walk in the clubhouse and go, guys, I'm sorry, I just didn't have it tonight, or, or well, that I, sort of thing? I might to a starting pitcher. If you come in and blow a lead for him, that'd be the guy I talk to. Everybody else, I don't go around teammate, teammate. I mean, some of the teammates come by, pat you on the back, and say you get them tomorrow, and that kind of stuff. But to be honest, Drew, Drew yeah, when it comes down, you blow a game late, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to hear anything. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty upset right now. I just want to stay over my own little world, cool down, come back the next day, and get after it and I think you know I, I still am a firm believer in this that a manager makes a bullpen and, and what I mean by that is the guy continued to show confidence in, in his ability and I mean Clint talked about it in his press co uh, conference before the game today about Willie Tavares he said yeah okay he struck out four times but one thing he knows he's going to be back out there again today that's a confidence builder to Willie Tavares well it works in the bullpen the same way and here you are in the eighth inning he's out there and, and I think this is your guy just like uh, Mesa was a year ago this guy's your guy now Hairston with a base hit with one out. That'll bring Chad Tracy to the plate. Let's check another email. This is from Mirko in Alamosa. What do you predict from this revamped bullpen this year? I think of all things in baseball, the toughest thing to predict is bullpens. And George, I say this with all due respect, but you guys from year to year are, are tough to predict. Well, the There's thing very few guys who pitch middle relief the, the year in, year out. Well, one thing, one thing you learn about middle relief as an organization, you can't extend yourself contract-wise three or four years or, or even three years because what's going to happen, that guy's going to come in, and he's good. He's going to appear in 60, 70, 80 games, and he may pitch 100 innings, and he'll have a good year again, and then all of a sudden it'll be a down year. You don't see many middle relievers set up guys extend out three, four, five years. It's a rarity to find those type of guys that are consistent. Now, here, here's the other side of this. I try to explain this to fans an awful lot as I, as I walk around Denver or eat at the diner, wherever I'm at, and they'll say, man, how about the bullpen? Look what happened. And I say, well, you people don't understand is a hitter's exposed 600 times. All right? If he gets 200 hits, he's had a great year, hasn't he? Well, what do you do those other 400 times? Not very good. I mean, 66% of the time he failed, and everybody's saying, oh, man, you know, he failed. They're talking about the, the, the 300 he hit. Well, as a reliever, you go out there 65 times, you're going to mess up 20 of them. I'm just it's going to happen. It's, in, it's inevitable that you're going to give up uh, an error, a walk, a fly ball, blue pit, whatever. I mean, it's going to happen because you are exposed to the middle of the lineup 
tight situations in ball games. The pressure is most impacted, obviously, late in a ball game, the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. And it's just, it's going to happen. And that's why good teams typically have guys who have a little gray hair. And they're used to pitching late in games. And as often, they're not as it's often said, they're not bothered because they have short memories. The Troy Hawkins is that way. I mean, he's pitched 10 years in the big leagues. You're not bothered by the situation. You know, that's the other thing. It's just fastball just blew it right by. Yeah, a little giddy up right there. A lot of giddy up. You, you know, you're just not you're just not phased by the situations. You're not phased uh, by what they're asking of you. And I mean, Jeff Francis sitting here looking at a ball game that he's not going to get a decision in now, but he obviously wants to win, and and he put the club in a position to win. And Hawkins knows that, and he's sitting down in a bullpen. I mean, <clears throat> when you're in a Troy situation or Fuentes situation, you know, if it's a tie game in the eighth inning for for Latroy or a tie game in the ninth inning, you're in. You're the guy. And that, I mean, it's tied, it's pressure, you got to go pitch. Two and two with Hairston at first on Chad Tracy. Chris Young is on deck. Brandon Lyon throwing in the Diamondbacks bullpen. No movement, ground ball to first, could be two. There's one on the first double play. Good job by Hawkins. He Dove to the ground to get out of the way of the return throw. He was going to go cover the bag. Helton said, I got it. So a nice job by Latroy Hawkins in the eighth inning. 2 2, we go to the bottom of the eighth. 2 2 baseball game. Jamie Quirk noting some changes. We'll get to in a moment. Bottom of the eighth inning. And the Rockies will have Kaz Matsui to lead it off. Today's call to the bullpen is brought to you by Comcast Digital Home Phone Service. Call 1 800 Comcast for unlimited local and long distance. Brandon Lyon initially was warming up, but instead they're going to give the baseball, George, to hard throwing Tony Pena. You know, I think the reason why, if they had to lead, they'd go to Lyon, tie score, they go to Pena. 25 games a year ago, 3 and 4 record. 30 and 2 thirds, doesn't walk many. 21 uh, strikeouts over that span, did give up the long ball. One over five plus innings. The opponents hit 290 against him, so find out what happens early and often with the youngster in a tie ball game here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The other change in a double switch. Chad Tracy comes out of the ball game. He grounded into the inning ending double play. Alberto Cayaspo as he did yesterday comes in. So he'll hit third in the top of the ninth inning. Matsui Atkins Helton to face Pena who run that fastball 94 to 98 miles an hour. Matsui one for three an RBI single in the second. The heater at 94 tailing away, ball one. Well, not only is Coors Field a great place to watch a baseball game and play in it, it's uh, also a great place to hold your special event. Most areas of the ballpark available for everything from weddings and rehearsals to dinners to holiday parties, business meetings, and a whole lot more. 303-312-2552. Tony from Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic. One of two Tony Pena's in baseball. The shortstop in the American League. Is it three Tony Pena's, George? The manager, well, the, the ex catcher. But, he, but he's not, is he working right now? Yeah, first base coach for the Yankees. My was bad. was a year ago. My bad. There's three out there. There you go. But I was talking about actually playing. And Tony Tony's no longer uh, playing, but okay, three. Anyhow, one Tony, not this one, is Tony Jr. of the mm -hmm. more famous Tony Pena, the former manager, and now first base coach of the Yankees. The Atlanta Braves had uh, Tony Jr. and it was a shortstop and out of options, didn't have any room for him on the ball club, so they traded him late in spring training uh, to the Kansas City Royals, and he won the job there. Who's, who's the guy that's the rookie of the year? Come on, it's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, they sent him out. He's the uh, he's the first base coach. Is uh, hold on, Angel Barroa. Yeah, he, the, the he was the a first base year. coach. He married yeah. his his wife now in Triple A. This is softly hit Stephen Drew. Drew's going to have to hurry with Matsui's speed, and he gets him. One out, Garrett Atkins coming to the plate. He's our insurance inside information subject. Garrett Atkins had 102 hits last year after the All-Star break, tied for first in baseball with two other players, Derek Jeter 
and Juan Pierre. Pierre did it last year with the Cubs. He's now with the L.A. Dodgers. We'll see Juan next week. Rafael Fercal was next with 101. Fercal's been hurt. He may be ready to come off the disabled list when the Rockies hit L.A. next week. Talk about a great one-two punch at the top of the lineup. Pierre and Fercal. Fercal and Pierre. Our insurance inside information. Atkins looking for his first knock of 07. Well, he's hit some balls hard enough in the, in the first couple of ball games to have more than one base hit. It's just been right at people. Line shot out to Tracy. A line shot yesterday with runners in scoring position to left field to Harrison. Here's the 2 0 to Garrett. And that's a chop foul. Atkins trains in the offseason periodically with one of his closest friends, Chase Utley, the big star of the Philadelphia Phillies, who signed a huge contract in the offseason. And Utley got married in the offseason. His best man was Garrett Atkins. Both of those two big stars for the UCLA Bruins before signing professional contracts. Here's the 2 1. Up high, 3 and 1. That's a changeup. That's how hard he throws. That changeup, 85. Well, at 10 miles an hour, typically less than your fastball, and he's flashed 94, 95 on the fastball. So, you know, the thing is, the Major League average fastball is 88, 89 miles an hour. Fastball count here, 3 1. Rick down the line. Fair ball for Garrett Atkins. He'll cut the bag at first and head to second base with a double. So the go ahead run in scoring position for Todd Help. Hitters love that 3 1 count, don't they? Yeah, you're getting that fastball count regardless of how hard you throw it. You just sit and hope it's in your zone where you can handle it, and he does. I mean, he shot this ball by Colaspo down into the outfield. You yeah, see it bounce off of there, and then uh, Atkins trot into second. Check our Quest Spirit of Service in game box. Some offense early in the game against Levon Hernandez, and then he was dominant third through the seventh inning. Helton a couple of hits yesterday, looking for his first knock tonight. Right now would be perfect time for it. Now they're going to put him on, which is not a huge surprise. They'll set up the double play possibility, go right on right with Holiday. Well, that's just fundamental baseball. I mean, that's, this is good strategy. You got to try to set this situation up. And, not let a guy that's hit 338 in his career, 334, come back and beat you. Be a little fearful. I mean, choice A and choice B. There's not a lot of difference. I mean, <laughs> Helton to Holiday. You know, that, that's a that's a part of this potency that happens with this club that everybody talks about. Might be right on right, but you know, that right on right's a pretty good right-handed bat. Here's the lone left-hander. Yeah, that's late. That's for Hop. I mean, he did, he wasn't up early enough to face Helton, so I mean, it's going to be. You know, he's there for Hop if they happen to get to him. Fuentes is throwing in the Rockies bullpen if they get a lead. So Holiday will come up with two on and one out. Rockies trying to unknot this ball game in the eighth. Matt, an RBI single in the first, fly ball to deep left field in the strikeout. Now he's against Levon Hernandez. He's stepping in for the first time tonight against Tony Pena. 25-year-old Dominican. Consistency last year holiday hit 327 versus lefties 325 versus righties First time these two have matched up in a ball game Drives one on the right field, but it's right at Eric Burns. I'll tell you, he stayed on that pitch right on top of it, did everything you're supposed to do it as a hitter, unfortunately, right at somebody. I know Holiday disappointed because he smoked it. You know, just 
just watch his contact, his concentration on a ball. Got the hands inside and through. Watch the hands work down into that zone as the ball starts to come. See inside that baseball, and then here comes the bat right in behind it. That concentration, the bent leg and back leg drive off that stiff front. A nice job of hitting. Too bad it ended up right at uh, Eric Burns in right field. Now let's see if Bob Melvin will come out of the dugout now. And go get Doug Slate. Doesn't look like he's going to do it. He's going to allow Pena to face Hop. Surprise, George? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you start to look on our bench. If you if you want to pinch hit for him, Baker's gone. So, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised on it. But maybe they feel like the fastball of Pena on the inside half of the plate can do a job on Hop. You know, it's all about the, the matchup and the numbers. You know, so many managers look through those numbers to help make their decisions during a ball game. Hop one for three against Pena in his career. Brad opposite field base hit. Now it's hit right at Hairston. He's up with a clean. Rocky sending the runner. Throws in time. And out at the plate is Garrett Atkins. And he was out by a bunch. So the Rockies gamble. And Scott Hairston throws out Garrett Atkins. And it remains tied as we go to the ninth. Opposite field base hit. Garrett Atkins around third, and Scott Hairston came up with it quickly and made a perfect throw to Snyder. Brought to you by Valero Energy to take you anywhere. And if you're at home and you're saying, why did Mike Gallego send him? You know what? I think it's the right play, George. Two outs. You get the base hit as Brian Fuentes comes on. you got to have a perfect throw to the plate. And give Scott Hairston a lot of credit. He came up with yeah. it cleanly and he made a perfect throw. Yeah, I mean, it's the eighth inning. You got a shot at it, take it. Now, it Fuente has 30 of 36 save opportunities, 344. You see the opponent's average. At home in a tie game, you got to send him out there. I mean, you're getting the last at bat. He's your closer. Have him come out and uh, pitch this ninth inning, give it a shot to come in in the ninth and try to win the ball game. The, the, the Rockies will send up two to Whiskey, Inetta, and then a pinch hitter. So. Now he's out here for three outs. Hopefully uh, makes the Rockies uh, hit with a win on the line in the bottom of the night. Chris Young against Tito, as his teammates call him. Brian Fuentes and Tito. Well, Brian grew up in Northern California, Merced. Tito Fuentes back in the 60s, pretty good giant second baseman. I played with him in winter ball through in 1977. Did you really? Still playing, yeah. And I, I mean, he was... Uh, a strange cat, to say the least. <laughs> you you kind of paused. Well, you're trying to say, How can I certain, do this well, diplomatically? I mean, there's certain things you don't say on TV. I mean, he was just a, he was just kind of one of those guys. I mean, he was very superstitious. Um, Center field. He had two hats. When he kid, he had two houses with a walkway in between. Kids lived over there. He lived over here. Okay. Check out Tracy Ringlesby's column on the Rockies in Major League Baseball in the Rocky Mountain News. Here's the Cowboy. Chris Snyder with one out. You know, I tell you, you know, you're talking about Fuentes. When I said he was did some strange things. And I don't know what the fluid was, but he come out with us like a leather pouch before a game. Like, you know, when you're throwing the ball in the first inning? Yeah. And he started throwing it all over second base. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm getting rid of all the errors. I said, what? I said, I'm getting rid of all the errors. I said, you can't, what is that stuff? It's a secret. You, you know what? You really have to be strange for a guy that spent a lot of time in the bullpen to yeah. think you're doing something that's odd, right? Well, I mean, yeah, that was odd. That was a little weird. How many guys come out with leather pouch and start spraying the stuff all around second base so you don't make an error? Only the game of baseball. That overmatches Snyder. It's one and two. I'll tell you, with that arm slot, and we've said it so many times the last few years, the two-time All-Star Brian Fuentes, you think he's throwing 110 miles an hour, and you look up, and it's 89, 90. Well, it's deceptive, and the ball explodes on the plate because of the quickness of the arm out of that slot. That, that finish on it is, is what sells it. It to me what really made him as good as he is is the changeup that he's able to roll over on. I mean, he's, all, he's got that nasty slider, but then you're able to throw that changeup to a right-handed hitter. When he's got it on, man, it's filthy to go with that fastball. 2-2, two, two, see you later. Fuentes with the first of many strikeouts this year. He gets Snyder for the second out of the inning.
Well, the, the other side of this thing with Fuentes at Uli, I mean, he works from there down the majority of the time. And, and the fastball is going to have a lot of movement on it. This ball cuts on the inside part of the plate. He can tail it away from the right-handers. I mean, it's, it's just difficult guy to pick the ball up off of and, and have a good response against him. This is Alberto Cayaspo. Came in in a double switch. Hitting in the nine hole. Line drive, foul down the right field line. If you have a break in your windshield, take it to Elite Auto Glass. Number one for more than one reason. Talked about this yesterday. Kiaspa, one of the toughest men in minor league baseball to strike out the last couple of years. 70 spring at bats, George. No punch outs. Pretty good contact guy, huh? Hey, just quick, real quick, I want to tell everybody, join the big leagues by signing up for the Rockies Rookies Kids Fan Club. It's open to kids 15 and under. Sorry, Drew. Get free Rockies tickets, access membership events, and a whole lot more. 303-312. Back. That pitch misses 2-1. and one. Again, as George mentioned, it bears repeating. Going to the bottom of the ninth inning, the Rockies will have Tulowitzki, Ionetta. And then some options off the bench. The only option not available, Jeff Baker, who had a pinch single a couple of innings ago. You have Finley and Mabry from the left side, Carroll and your backup catcher, Tori Alba, from the right side. And this is why Bob Melvin gambled last inning. He's looking ahead, and he's going, he knows Finley and Mabry are there. They can leave the yard. Carroll's more of a set the table guy. And he has held Slayton back. As this ball is punched to center field for a base hit, but he's held Slayton back, George, to deal with one of those two. Yeah, he has. I mean, it, it, that's a very good statement. I mean, he's just been able to hold him back down into the bullpen if they go to those. And I think it'll, the situation will, the situation will dictate what Jamie does. And if you just joined the, the, the broadcast, uh, Clint serving his suspension, Valverde, their clothes are warming up. Uh, and Jamie Quirk's the manager tonight. So Jamie, I mean, if there's one out and, and a runner on first, and you may see or no outs and a runner on first, or you know whatever first and second, you may see Carroll go up and sacrifice over. You know, I mean, it's, it's going to depend on the situation of the ball game and who he goes to on the bench. One ball count on Stephen Drew. One for four, couple of fly balls, and the ground ball to short. There's a strike. Lefties last year hit just 221 against Brian Fuentes. Excuse me, 186 last year, I should say. And the opposition overall hit a whopping 209. It's not like righties feasted on Fuentes. 217 average. Ball, two strikes, the first Rocky pitcher ever. Back to back All Star games. Change up inside, two and two. Ryan letting Kiaspo know he hasn't forgotten about him. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. He's out full on Drew, so Kiaspo will be moving on the pitch. Yeah, thinking about it, I mean, just high heat. Drew uh, looked a little mystified when he got that check swing strike two called on him. He didn't see him pick up the ball very well there either. And it's popped up on the infield. Kaz Matsui battling the wind and make the catch. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Tulowitzki will lead it off. The Rockies need a run for W.
Chevy dealers. Visit them at ColoradoChevyDealers.com. By Gatorade, it's in the MLB. Is it in you? And by Southwest Airlines, you are now free to move about the country. Here we go, bottom of the ninth inning. Rockies two, Diamondbacks two. It'll be Troy Tulowitzki to lead it off. Jamie Carroll with a bat in his hand. They may call upon his services before this inning is over. Tony Pena remains in the game. Rockies had him on the ropes a little bit in the eighth inning. They got a double by Atkins. Intentionally walked Helton and then with two outs hops singled hard to left field. Scott Hairston threw out Atkins at the plate. 0-1 on Tulowitzki who can leave the yard. This ball is topped to short. Drew's throw and plenty of time one out. Boy he's a good looking young player. Yeah, two good uh, young short stops in this ball game. Tulowitzki and Drew. I mean Drew recognized Tulowitzki can run a little bit. Ball, let the ball get through. Drew just picked a uh, great exchange in the throw. This season, Cardell Holmes is sponsoring home runs for hunger. Each time a Rocky hits a home run, Cardell Holmes will donate $100 to the Food Bank of the Rockies. To learn more about home runs for hunger or to pledge your support, go to CardellHolmes.com. Click on the home runs for hunger icon. Found back by Ionetta. Chris had a double to deep left field, his first plate appearance tonight. The board on an error in the fourth. He's one for three officially. Right now, Steve Finley has come out on deck. Well, I mean, with two outs, nobody on base, take the shot. I mean, you know, one swing, Finley with over 300 career home runs. You just take the shot and see if he can leave the yard with one swing. Ramirez is throwing down in the Rockies bullpen. The day game tomorrow, I don't know make the decision if you if you extend Fuentes too far then you're losing for tomorrow. It's that ninth inning at home thing uh, you know send him out with a tie score try to maintain it and, and then get him out of there and let Ramirez and the rest of the bullpen try to handle it. You do have an off day on Thursday. It's a travel day. Rockies will play in San Diego open up a nine game trip on Friday night. Here's the one two. That just missed. Slider. So Payne with two outs. And Steve Finley will come up. Yeah, this nasty slider. It's late tilt and break right at the very end. There and a dip on it. And away from Mayonetta. Yeah, I was able to get the punch out. Finley pinch hit in yesterday's ball game. Walked and would stay in the ball game in center field late. career home runs for Steve Finley. On the inside corner at 94. Well, something for a lot of right handed pitchers that difficult to do is to fire that heat on the inside half of the plate because of the late movement it gets it out over the plate. Well, Pena's done a pretty nice job against the lefties just to bury that thing in. Looks like he's trying to go away. Change up 84. 303 home runs in Finley's career. He's knocked in 1165. Here's a look at his swing. Yeah, that's a late dip on that split finger. It just comes in and just makes that dive down. Three times in his career, he's hit more than 30 in a season. His career high 35 with the Diamondbacks in 2000. One, two, right there, strike three. So Tony Pena with a very strong ninth inning, and we will go extra frames. On the second day of the baseball season 2007, it's in the MLB. Is it in you?
Drew Goodman, George Frazier from Coors Field. Last year in extra frames, the Rockies were very good 8-4. Diamondbacks above 500 as well. They were seven and five, but this is a whole new season. The Rockies in the top of the tenth will turn to Ramon Ramirez, and he's going to see two, three, and four in the Diamondback lineup: Connor Jackson, Orlando Hudson, and Eric Burns. Ramirez worked an inning yesterday and was very sound. He was very sound yesterday. Those 61 strikeouts, 67 and two thirds, gives him that opportunity for the punch outs here. So Right-handed, left-handed, so. Now, if you get a little deeper, I don't know how far they're going to let Pena go, but he's the fourth, uh, what is it, fifth guy up this inning. He's still two superb innings so far out of their bullpen. George, flashback with me, if you would. I'm on my way. Okay. It's just a year ago. You recall this night, you and I were up very late. 1 1 as the clock moves on and on into the night. 18 innings, the longest ball game in Rockies history, and Eric Burns would score the game winner. And here we go. Connor Jackson takes ball one against Ramon Ramirez. Jackson, two for three and a walk in the ball game. Scored a run after doubling in the fifth. And he falls behind two and nothing. First 19 games for the Rockies inside the National League West. And Ramirez behind 3-0. Well, you need base runners, and Jackson has the power to leave the yard. So as a manager, do you give the take? Do you turn him loose on 3-0 late game tied like this? Hold on to the bat, son. Make him throw you a strike. Absolutely. I mean, he hasn't been close the first three. That's on the outside corner. Hudson on deck. In the air, left field playable. Holiday started in, has to drift back again. Left center field, he makes the catch. One out. Talking about the National League West, and with the unbalanced schedule, you have to play well inside your division if you're to capture a division title. Last year, the Rockies started out very well inside the West, but they finished 31 and 44. They've had a winning record inside the West only one time. You know, last year, they were 45 and 42 against everybody else, the American League and the Central and the East in the National League. But inside the division, 13 games south of 500. And they lost the season series last year, 12 games to seven of the Diamondbacks. They lost the season series two years ago to Arizona, 11 to seven. Here's the 0-1 on Hudson, and it is now 0-2 as this is chipped foul. Rockies really struggled with the Dodgers last year. They were overmatched. Seemed like every night Brad Penny was throwing. And Five was, and 0. Yeah. Rockies have to be much better against L.A. Swung on at this. Good job by Ramirez. Hudson thought it was the third out. Do you see what Orlando did? <laughs> yeah, he started he was getting, going out to his position. Yep, going to get undressed and head to the house. I mean, he dropped the helmet, the bat. And okay, I'll take the shin guard off. Yeah, maybe I won't. See, watch right here. Let it run a little more, guys. There uh, it is. No, it's, not, it's not I'm over going yet. Out the field. No, that, see, yeah, we're going to play three outs tonight, Orlando. Yeah, pick it all up and take it to the dugout with you. I mean, you know. Normally you want to carry it, you just don't want to stick around that long. Ah, the fun part of the game, guys. Now you got to be careful with Burns. Ramirez goes with the slider, ball one. Burns tonight, one for four, an RBI hit in the fifth. Tavares swung over toward right center field. Two and one. 
Ramirez began his career last year at the Rockies with 15 and a third consecutive scoreless innings, a team record to begin his career. Punch the other way. Second time tonight, Burns has had that hit right there. I mean, a, a line shot through the hole on the right side. Yeah, in the fifth inning, that base hit scored a run. So, I mean, yeah, he just taking the ball away from him. Instead of trying to pull it and hook it, he just goes with it. Just a nice job of hitting. Let me take a look here. Watch the pitch down and away from him out on that outside part of the plate. And, I mean, it, it just takes it that way. So, whatever formula you had prior to uh, this series on Eric Burns, maybe you might go back and uh, redraw the board a little bit and hope you come up with a different one because he's handled that pitch away. Yeah, George, he's rewriting the book on him on himself a little bit because that was what you did with Eric Burns. You got it out of way. And now he's readjusting. You, you always hear about that kind of first couple times through a, a league for a young player. Well, Burns readjusting here, you know, and he's been in the game for a while. Yeah, he's been around a little bit, knows what he's doing, and uh, obviously here, uh, saying, are oh, you going to pitch me? Well, I'll go that way. Before he'd pull off the ball and try to launch all the time. Hairston's a dangerous man also. He's got pop. This guy's well put together. Scott, four years younger than Jerry, his older brother. A yeah, very short, quick stroke to the zone. I mean, he gets to the ball in a hurry. That's the thing you got to be careful of. And as the game changes, so does his approach. There you are in a tenth inning. He's looking middle half in, trying to lift something. Burns a good lead, doesn't go. Swung on a miss, one and two. Hairston has another brother, three years older. I tell you, there, there's no reason not to go back to this. Uh, Hard slider, a late breaking slider from Ramirez right out of the glove. Very deceiving. See, watch that late dip right at the very end and down and away from the right handed hitter. Burns takes off. Ionetta's throw to second, not in time. Eric Burns with his first stolen base of the year. 25 stolen bases a year ago for Eric Burns and uh, able to make it right here. It takes off on him. The Rockies have their bullpen busy. BK just got up. Jeremy Affeld had been throwing. Ramirez with a 2 2 count, two outs. In the air, center field. It'll hang up there for Tavares and we'll go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Burns left at second base. It remains two for the Diamondbacks, two for the Rockies. Bottom of the tenth inning, the Rockies and Diamondbacks tied up at two for the Rockies. They'll have the top of the order, and they'll see a new pitcher, a guy they saw yesterday, Brandon Lyon, the eighth inning specialist, at least from the outset this year, at least initially this year, for... Bob Melvin and the Diamondbacks. Yeah, big number there. 23 holes on the season a year ago and 68 ball games. It just tells you that's a position he's in. He's given up seven home runs and almost 70 innings. Top of the order for the Rockies. You get to speed on, make something happen, and pick up a W. Have some high fives and handshakes. Sounds like a good plan. Hopefully, we'll follow it through. Willie Tavares will lead it off. Willie's one for four. Was robbed of a hit his second time up. Hit a bullet up the middle. Stephen Drew with the infield drawn in, dove, came up with the baseball and threw him out. Would have driven in a run, in fact. It was a fastball for a strike. 27-year-old native of Salt Lake City, Utah. Brandon Lyon 